Axe UQ Media is this weekend. And today, as always, we're running through all the tips and tricks for this event. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So this event's gonna be going June 10th from 2 to 5 p.m. local time. So this Saturday. Bonus engine event, Axe users are gonna be spawning everywhere in the wild with a shine rate of one in 25. We'll have three times catch XP, three hour instances, three hour lure modules, two times catch candy, two times chance of getting XL candy for any trainer above level 31, one extra special trade during the day for a total of three and trades will require 50% less stars. By the way, the trade bonuses are gonna be going down until 10 p.m. that night. You can also evolve a fracture into a Haxorus during the event or up to five hours after the event to get a new charge attack breaking swipe, which we will talk about if this move is any good or not later in the video. Also, after the community from 5 to 10 p.m., there will be four star raid battles for a fracture, which you can go ahead and complete, but you cannot participate in these with a remote raid pass. Defeat one of these fracture raids, and for the next 30 minutes within 300 meters of that gym, Axios will be spawning with a shine rate of 1 in 25. There'll also be exclusive stickers you can get from spinning Pokestops, open gifts, and purchasing in them, as well as field research tasks, which include the task catch three Axios, three leader and Axio encounter, five great balls, two ultra balls, two pineapple berries or 500 Stardust, and finally a $1 special research story called Keeping Sharp, which will be a four page special research you can go ahead and complete, get you some extra Axio encounters and some other items. I don't know what the exact tasks are yet, but usually these researches do give you more than $1 worth of items back. I am running my first ever in-person event this weekend during Axie Community Day, 2 to 5 p.m. It's gonna be at Andrew Hayden Park in Ottawa, Ontario, and there's going to be opportunities to be in a video. We're gonna be giving out in-game rewards. There's gonna be a real-life Pokemon Go obstacle course you can compete in. There'll be a real-life Pokestop as well, and plenty of other opportunities to have some fun during Community Day. All the information you need to know about it is going to be on screen. However, we haven't confirmed the exact location in the park, so please stay tuned to my Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, where I'll be announcing on the day or near the day where exactly it's going to be, but Andrew Hayne Park's not that big, so you should be able to find us. Unless I hope to see anyone who could make it out there on community day at the in-person event because it's going to be an absolute blast. Now let's get back to the actual tips and tricks. With the event details of the way, let's get right into the tips, starting with the 100% IVs for Axew. On screen is Axew's perfect IV chart, showing you the 100% IV CP for Axew from level one to level 50, but there's only a couple ones we wanna look at here. If Axew is gotten from field research task or any sort of research task, it's gonna be caught at level 15, which means a 586 with a perfect IV for Axew from field research. If you're looking for Axew's in weather boosted weather, which Axew gets boosted in windy weather being a dragon type, level 35 will be the highest level Axew you can find in the wild. And that's gonna be a 1271 as 100% IV. So that's the highest potential CP you could find in those conditions. If it is any weather other than windy weather, level 30 is going to be the highest, 1173 will be the 100% IV for Axew in non-windy conditions. Other than that, there's like 32 other 100% IVs you could find for Axew in the wild. But remember, just because you find, you know, a 508, that doesn't guarantee it's a level 13 100% IV. It could be a higher level Axew with worse IVs, which bring down that CP. But those are the ones you can look out for. We also need to talk about PVP IVs. If you don't own Pokemon Go, you want low attack, high defense, high stamina on your Pokemon for PVP. Let's quickly run through what the best IV sets for Haxorus are going to be in Pokemon Go PVP if you want one. Starting with Haxorus in the Great League, we're going to be looking at a 0 14, 13 as the rank one best possible IV set. But again, anything low attack, high defense, high stamina does work well. In the Ultra League, something very similar, a 1 15, 15 will be the rank one PVP IVs for a Haxorus in that league. And then finally in the Master League, of course, a 15, 15, 15, 100% IV is the best you can go with, but any sort of high IVs will work well for a Haxorus in the Master League. Also, I will just do a quick shout out to Fracture in the Great League. A 1 15, 15 is the best IV set for Fracture in that PVP league. You can download an app like Poke Genie if you want to go ahead and quickly scan your IV sets while you're out on the day instead of having to refer to this website, in which will give you a breakdown of the IV set you caught for the different axes you're catching during the day. But the question remains, is Haxorus actually any good? And is it actually worth hunting these PVP IVs? Well, let's go through if Haxorus is meta in Pokemon Go. Let's first start with raids and Haxorus is actually gonna be pretty good ranking at the number three overall non-mega or non-shadow dragon type raid attacker. So yes, not including all those strong shadows like Shadow Dragonite and Shadow Salamence and all those strong megas like Mega Salamence, Latios, etc. Haxorus does see play, which makes it a great Pokemon for any of these new players who need some strong dragon type raid attackers because dragon Pokemon do come pretty useful going up against other dragon types and raids. Also, throwing in a shadow form will definitely help Haxorus make a huge jump in the future. So if you do want to prepare, you can go ahead and get a lot of XL candies and candies for Haxorus, in which in the future, if Axew ever does get a shadow form in Pokemon Go, you can go ahead and evolve it and have a shadow Haxorus, which will probably be one of the best dragon type raid attackers in the game. Now's your chance to get the candies. The moveset, by the way, for a dragon type raid attacking Haxorus is going to be Dragon Tail, as well as the new breaking swipe. So make sure you get those legacy moves on your raid attacking Haxoruses. If we're going to be taking a look at PVP here, Haxorus is a pretty squishy Pokemon. Taking a look at it, 
here in the Great League, it can beat Scrafty, Swampert, Licky Tongue, Bastiodon, Lantern, Vigoroth, Umbreon, Mandibuzz, and Walren, which are some pretty strong Pokemon in the meta. But unfortunately, it won't be that strong in the Great League because of its high stats, it just doesn't perform as well in the lower CP leagues at a lower level. In the Ultra League, we're seeing a similar thing here, able to beat things like Registeel, Cobalion, Swampert, Double, Galarian Stunfisk, and Galissapod. This Pokemon will be able to counter a bit of the meta, but it also has a couple decent losses like Cresselia, Aurorus, Walren, all those ice types it's not going to do well against. However, where I'm most excited for it is going to be in the Master League. Having an amazing moveset of Counter, Night Slash, and Breaking Swipe, you'll see it beat Pokemon like Groudon, Yveltal, Garatina Origin Form, Melmetal, Mamoswine, ho -Oh, Zarude, Kyogre, Ursa Luna, and all those Pokemon. I think it will still struggle against, of course, Zacian, the fairy type Pokemon. Also, any sort of dragon type that does very high fast move dragon damage, like Dialga with Dragon Breath, Palkia with Dragon Tail, Gyarados with Dragon Breath, Zekrom with Dragon Breath, and any Pokemon that has Dragon Breath because Haxorus is not the tankiest Pokemon. So although it can output a lot, a lot of damage and do decent damage to Dialga because it does have counter, I still think it is going to struggle in those mirror matches and overall might struggle a bit. But this is still an amazing Pokemon to grab. You can even run it in the Master Premier Cup, which is not going to include any legendaries where I think it will do even better. So definitely get yourself one honestly for all three leagues because this Pokemon is not bad in all three leagues. Now to run one in all three leagues you're gonna need candy so let's go through my best candy tips on how to grind candy in Pokemon Go during this community day. Number one use pineapple berries, regular pineapple berries, multiply your catch candy by two and silvers by 2.34 so make sure you use those pineapple berries during the community day on every axe you catch if you want candies. Also you can go ahead and mega evolve a Pokemon. If you don't know when you mega evolve Pokemon in Pokemon Go you will get extra candies, extra XL candies, and extra XP for catching Pokemon that share a type with that mega. Axe you being a dragon type we're gonna make sure we mega evolve a dragon type Pokemon Pokemon during this event, and that's going to include Mega Charizard X, Mega Ampharos, Mega Sceptile, Mega Altaria, Mega Salamence, Mega Latios, and Mega Latias. Mega Evolve any one of those Pokemon during the community day before you start catching to make sure you're taking full advantage of all those candies and extra XL candies you can get. This also makes it great for grinding XP, which is a tip we'll get into in a bit. You can also trade though. It is the season of hidden gems now, which is amazing, which means now every time you trade away a Pokemon, a guaranteed an XL candy, as well as you can get one extra regular candy for trading those Pokemon away, no matter the distance. So after your community, try to ask a friend, try to ask maybe a new player that you've never even met before and see if they want to do some trades. Trading away 100 Axews is an extra 100 XL candies for Axew, which can be very useful towards powering up your Haxorus. Also, you do get three special trades during the day. So if you have any lucky trades or want to trade some shinies during the community day, make sure you coordinate those with your friends. You can also go ahead and just ask random trainers if they want to mirror trade three random shiny Axews because you never know, they might go lucky and might lead you to a Shundo Haxorus, which would be insane of a catch during the community day. Finally, you can go ahead and transfer Pokemon. On June June 20th from 6 to 7 p.m. is going to be Sun Kern Spotlight Hour, which has the bonus of two times transfer candy. So if you really want extra candies for Haxorus, save any of those Axios you might have received from trade or just regular ones that you don't plan on trading and transfer them on June 20th. That'll get you a bunch of extra candies for transferring those Pokemon because instead of getting one candy, you'll get two. Now we do have three times catch XP during this community day. And if you don't know in Pokemon Go, every time you hit an excellent throw, you're getting a thousand XP. Of course, during three times catch XP, that's going to be 3000. And with a lucky egg, that's 6000 XP. It actually ends up being about 7000 XP with the other bonuses. So if you're in need of XP, if you're not level 50 yet, or if you just want to prepare for level 60, make sure you focus on those excellent throws during the community day. Axew is not the most easy excellent throw, but I do know this Pokemon doesn't jump too much, which is great. So I think overall during the day, if you can just try to kind of focus on learning that excellent throw circle and trying to hit those excellent throws on the lucky egg. These three times catch XP community days are the best way for new players to grind a lot of XP in Pokemon Go, and it's pretty much the only reason I was able to get to level 50 so fast. Really focus on those excellent throws if you can. Finally, that leads us into our platinum metal tips. If you don't know, you need 35 platinum metals, go from level 48 to 49 in Pokemon Go, which ones should you work on during this event? We'll start off with, of course, the Dragon Tear Metal, cast 2,500 Dragon Types. This is one of the hardest Platinum type metals to complete, and Axie Kumide is the number one time to do it because Axies are going to be everywhere and they're Dragon Types. So catch as many Pokemon as you can during the Kumide using the Quick Catch Technique and the AR Catch Technique to work on this metal. We'll also have three hour lure modules. So the Picnicker Metal, use a lure module to help any trainer catch 2,500 Pokemon, is a great metal to work on. Go to a busy area, everyone's probably going to be out during Kumide because this is like one of the best communities of the year and drop those lures, magnetics, regular lures, rainies, whatever lure you might have in those busy areas and trainers will catch Pokemon off those lures to help you work on this metal. We also have the Pokemon Ranger Metal, complete 2,500 field research tasks. Community day field research tasks are some of the easiest in Pokemon Go. It literally requires you to catch three of the community day Pokemon, which is everywhere. So this is a great event to work on a lot of field research tasks to try to finish this metal. We do of course get five free snapshots in the community day as well. So the Cameraman Metal have 400 encounters in Go Snapshot. Make sure you get those five Axew snapshots during the day. Don't forget them to work on this metal. And then finally, the tiny Pokemon collector and the jumbo Pokemon collector. Now there is not a higher chance of finding extra, extra small or extra, extra large Pokemon. But if you do find any during the community day, since you're gonna have so many candies, don't be scared to go ahead and evolve those extra 
small and extra large Pokemon all the way into your final form. If you don't know when you evolve an extra small or extra large Pokemon, it actually adds an extra point towards this metal. So catching one extra small axe you, you evolve into Fracture, into Haxorus, that's three extra points towards this metal. It's not like you don't have candy to spare. With that being said though, that is pretty much my tips for Axe You Community. Comment below which ones I might've missed. And I hope you guys have an amazing Axe You Community. It's gonna be an absolute blast and definitely one of the best communities of the year. Follow for more tips everybody, peace.